we have plenty of female athletes in the audience, and so we want to certainly talk to you as well. And I can't do that, so. <laughs> we will welcome up Stephanie Sanders from Bath, now a softball coach at Villanova, and Kenzie Rushton back at Salina. Give them a hand as they were WBL rivals that we won't talk about, but they have come a long way in their lives. How, what's it like making a team in college? In high school, it's who you have around you. But in college, what does it take to put a team together, Seth? Um, I mean, it's kind of similar. Um, when we go out and we look for athletes, um, we look at them not just athletically, but who they are as people, what they're involved with um, in their communities or in their schools, obviously what their grades, first and foremost, their grades, what kind of grades they're getting. We want good students. Um, and really, we look at their families, too. When we're recruiting you, we're not just recruiting the kid, but we're recruiting um, their families as well. We want people who are all on board with, uh, for us, what Villanova is about. And um, for the kid, you know, the, you know, the kid that we're recruiting, we want their family to support them and support us um, in that process. So, um, you know, it's we just what we want at Villanova. We want good kids that are going to come and work hard, that are really going to work hard in school, um, and that are just going to develop personally um, and grow so they can be successful outside of college. So um, we share that with them, and if they're if they want that, I mean, we're going to come to us, come play for us. So. Yeah. Was Villanova pretty crazy around basketball time? Yes, Villanova was really crazy this year. The whole city of Philadelphia was crazy this year. Well, that's true, the Eagles as well. Yeah, yeah. so um, it was a really fun time to be in Philly. Um, just, I mean, our, our basketball program is just world class. Um, their, their coaching staff, Jay Wright, if you don't know, he's awesome. Um, just great, you know, to be able to sit in meetings and listen to them speak. And um, it definitely helped me grow as a coach and as a person. Um, and just, I love college basketball. And so, you know, having them win a national championship was really cool. My heart was a little sad when Michigan State lost, but um, I guess second, Villanova's second best, so <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> Kenzie, same question as far as putting a team together. What do you look for in those type of high school athletes that want to play in college? Yeah, I think a certain preparedness is definitely something that we as coaches looked for. A lot of times, um, even this year, I got to work in the admissions office, so with non-athletes and athletes on the coaching level. And I think just when students walk in and we start asking them questions as admissions counselors or coaching or coaches, and they give you this blank stare that says, I haven't thought about that, or I don't really know what I want to do. And it's fine to come in and be undecided, but to start realizing that right now, as you guys sit out here and, and listen to this today, it's okay to start thinking about your future. Yes, you wanna have fun and enjoy your high school experience, but you also need to start realizing that the actions and words and people you choose to surround yourself with on a daily basis do impact your future and, and where you're gonna end up. So I think just um, for us, a maturity or preparedness that you know I have thought about why I wanna come to your school and I have thought about what's gonna be most important to me when I step on the field or court for you as an athlete. And I think that that goes a long way for us as a coaching staff. You and your husband, Brandon, are our first husband-wife legend group, so congratulations to that. <laughs> Thank he, you. He Thank played you. at Ohio Northern as well. I uh, just got did. married, what, a couple months ago? April 14th, yeah. Okay, remember that, Brandon, April 14th. It's his birthday, so he won't forget it. He's honestly. a smart man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were okay with it? Uh, he picked it, so yeah, we, we were good with it. <laughs> and now you're back in Salina. You've taken over your alma mater as the girls' basketball coach. How did that all come together? It's really interesting I've told everyone that's, you know, asked me or been willing to listen that God truly works in tremendous ways. I was always the student athlete in Salina that had the stigma that I cannot wait to get the heck out of here. I can't wait to leave. I'm never coming back. I just, I always had this big, just big flashing no, don't do that sign in my head. Um, and I've been blessed to get to coach college, and that's what I was like, I'm going to be a head college coach someday. This is my road. This is what I want, what I want, what I want. And in my head, I just kept thinking, I, I, I. And uh, this year, my assistant got an opportunity and didn't end up taking it Ohio Northern, and my whole world kind of was like, okay, he's not leaving, so I am still in admissions, and I want to get back into college coaching. What am I going to do? Uh, a good friend of mine reached out and said, you know, maybe instead of praying, you know, Lord, how do I get into this college coaching world or what's my next move to become a coach, pray, you know, Lord, where do you need me to take the skills and the talents that you've blessed me with in my life and, and where, where am I needed and, and where would you like me to go? 
Um, I have a tremendous amount of Bulldog pride for Salina, and I, I always have. And seeing where our women's basketball program has went the past five, or five to six years, you know, just a lot of different coaches coming in and it always kind of a rotating door and them not having – um, someone stable and someone, you know, a, a leader that they can look to for years in a row um, really did hurt me to, to kind of watch that. And literally two weeks after I started praying about that, the Salina girls basketball position opened up. And I first I was like, oh, no, like, uh, that's not what you want me to do. Right. And then I, I prayed about it a little more and um, it all happened really quickly. And I was given the position and then everything else with life hit, which you'll realize, you know, you have to sell a house, buy a new house. You're like, where, how's this all going to work? Well, we ended up selling our house. We found out about, I got the job on Wednesday. The friend who told me to start praying about it differently bought our house on Friday. Yeah. Then we went to look for houses on Saturday. We put a really semi lower offer than what they were asking in on this one house. And the person texted our realtor and said, thank you for always, tell her thank you for always taking care of my mother. And then they ended up accepting our offer the next day. So his mother was an elderly woman, elderly couple that had lived next door to me my entire life growing up in Salina. And it was her son that we bought the house from. So it just, the way the Lord worked for us and, and kind of put everything into place was amazing. And now I, I get to hopefully be a good role model and get to impact the lives of uh, the Salina Bulldogs again. So Awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll have some Salina Bulldog games on WSN. So yeah. we'll, we'll have a camera right on you. <laughs> we'll see how you do. Can, okay. you want, can you mic? Can we mic you up? Is that all right? Oh, I don't know. Maybe what. not. All right. <laughs> Give me a year. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, you, I know you were similar. You've shared that at past banquets that you wanted to get out of Lima. You were ready to go, and then you became pro Lima, and you love Lima. But God goes with you wherever you go. He went with you to Michigan State, and certainly, you know, going to Philadelphia by yourself, not knowing anyone. How did God go with you on that journey? Um. So Philadelphia, Andy and I have had several conversations about Philadelphia. Um, it was a really big step for me to, I mean, I've always been kind of out of Lima away, but still close enough where if I needed to come home or if my, my family could come to my games, they could still be there. So um, going to Philadelphia was a big step for me, um, but I had to take it and I knew I had to take it. Um, it definitely brought its challenges. And um, I was just really lucky that once I got to Villanova, first of all, the people were phenomenal. Um, but where I really started to um, kind of feel at peace was um, I started making connections with our campus ministry. Um, and the guy that runs that is kind of younger like me. Um, and he was just like reaching out to me, reaching out to me. And I was kind of just like, oh, I'm shy, not from here. And just kind of, um, and he just, kept at me and finally I just was like you know what let's go get coffee let's and um, he just became a really good resource for me and uh, we got to do things where we ran our team retreat we had two a year and that was really cool um, to see our athletes um, in a different kind of atmosphere not just on the softball field or in the classroom um, where they can connect with each other spiritually and realize um, that really a lot of them have the same feelings um, towards their faith and stuff um, and then also just uh, like we got to help one of the girls on our team we got to help her start a women's uh, Bible study on campus so one of the girls on our team is the leader of that now and this coming year she'll um, actually be fully in charge of that so um, all these things just really um, once I just kind of started letting go of um, and accepting kind of what God was telling me and showing me and bringing me. I was just kind of like stuck in my own world, just tunnel visioned. Um, and I just started opening up my eyes and really just taking in everything that he was offering me. I really started just to feel at peace and kind of, you know, like Kinsey said, it was like things just started clicking and um, like it was just like it was it, I just told Andy, like life is just so good. Like God, it's just working just amazingly right now. And um I'm just really, really blessed. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming back, Stephanie Sanders and Kenzie Rushton. Give me a hand.